Welcome back, folks. Today we're going to be looking at the following example. We're given a vector field f of x, y, z equals e to the z, x, y, z, x cubed, and a path c consisting of straight line segments shown on the right. So our path seems to be forming this rectangle in R3. We'd like to evaluate the line integral of our vector field f along the path c. Hmm, now at a glance, this problem actually looks pretty involved. After all, our curve C is made up of four straight line segments. So does this mean we have to compute four separate line integrals and then add the results? Well, maybe. We were able to avoid this in the past using Green's theorem, but that result doesn't apply here. Green's theorem only works in R2 when we're dealing with curves in the xy plane. <gasps> but wait a second. We have a three-dimensional generalization of Green's theorem, Stokes' theorem. Stokes' theorem tells us that this line integral of f is really the same as a surface integral of the curl of f. Trading out four line integrals for one surface integral is going to save us a ton of time. I guess the next big question is, what's this surface s? Over which surface are we integrating? Well, according to Stokes' theorem, we have to integrate over a surface s whose boundary is this curve c. Now there are lots of surfaces with this property, but let's keep it simple. We could just take S to be this plane right here. So this is going to be our surface S, and our strategy is to compute this surface integral. Okay, we have our vector field F, and we're going to apply Stokes' theorem to convert this line integral into a surface integral. If we're going to be computing a surface integral, we should probably know the function that we're going to be integrating. So let's start by computing the curl of f. The curl of f is given by the determinant of i, j, k. In the second row, we have partial by partial x, partial by partial y, partial by partial z, and then finally our component functions, e to the z, x, y, z, and x cubed. Okay, well, if I look in the i component, it looks like I'm going to be doing partial by partial y of x cubed minus partial by partial z of x, y, z. That will be minus x, y. We then subtract j times partial by partial x of x cubed minus partial by partial z of e to the z, and that gives us e to the z minus 3x squared. And then finally, we add k times partial by partial x of x, y, z minus partial by partial y of e to the z. So that's simply y, z. All right, we know the vector field that we're going to be integrating, but we still don't know much about this surface s. If we want to compute this surface integral, we're going to have to find a parametric equation that traces our surface. Well, notice that s is part of the plane that passes through these four points. So I guess we could find the equation of the plane by using the techniques from the very beginning of our course. We could say, all right, the plane contains this line segment and this line segment, and therefore their cross product is going to give us something orthogonal to the plane. But that's a lot of work, and I don't think it's necessary here. Notice that in our case, the plane is really just this line, z equals 1 minus x in the xz plane, translated parallel to the y-axis. So the equation of the whole plane is z equals 1 minus x. Of course, s is only part of the plane. It's the part where x is between 0 and 1, and y is between 0 and 2. Okay, since s comes from the graph of the function, z equals f of x, y equals 1 minus x, we can use our nice, easy parametrization. s is given by r of x, y equals x, y, 1 minus x, where x goes between 0 and 1, and y between 0 and 2. Now that we have a parametrization for our surface and the curl of our vector field, we're ready to compute this surface integral. To compute this surface integral, let's think back to our formula. The surface integral of the curl of f throughout s is really the double integral over d, d here is the set where our parameters live, this set here, of curl of f dot rx cross ry dA. Ah, but since we're dealing with the graph of a function here, z equals f of x, y, we can compute rx cross ry as minus partial f by partial x, minus partial f by partial y, 
and 1. Now the partial derivative with respect to x here is minus 1, and the partial derivative with respect to y is 0. So we get the vector 1, 0, 1. Now before moving forward, we should make sure that this normal vector is consistent with the orientation given to us by c. c is oriented counterclockwise, right? And if you imagine turning the lid of a Sprite bottle counterclockwise, while well, you're removing the lid, right? The lid is gonna come up or away from the bottle. So we're looking for upward orientation. Is that what we have? Yes, it is. You can see that we have a positive z-coordinate, so this is the correct cross product. Okay, using my bounds on x and y, I can rewrite this integral as the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 2, and now I'm supposed to take the dot product of the curl of f with this vector 1, 0, 1. That's going to leave me with minus xy plus yz dy dx. Notice that we still have this pesky z term floating around but we really want everything expressed in terms of our two parameters, x and y. So I'm gonna replace z with one minus x. This gives me the integral from zero to one of the integral from zero to two, and after some simplification, the integrand becomes y minus two xy dy dx. At this point, we can factor. If we factor out this y term, we get the integral from zero to two of y dy, times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus 2x dx. Now an antiderivative of y with respect to y is y squared over 2. We evaluate from 0 to 2. And an antiderivative for 1 minus 2x with respect to x is x minus x squared. We evaluate that from 0 to 1. Ah, but hold on a second. If I plug in 1 or 0 to this expression, it's going to evaluate to 0. So this term is really zero, and therefore our surface integral is equal to zero as well. According to Stokes' theorem, this means that the value of my line integral is also equal to zero.